Okay, in this session we're going to be talking about strain gauges, and this is a good basic understanding of what a strain gauge is, and it'll be applied to all the modules within this course of Strength Lab. And when we look at a strain gauge, we need to understand what strain is. Strain is basically the change in length over the original length. So for example, we have this hook. We're going to measure a known dimension before we put a load on it. We're going to put the load on it, and then we're going to expect that to change at some ratio depending on the amount of load that we put on there. Now over here we have a load versus deflection or extension diagram. This looks very similar to a stress strain diagram. The reason I went with load and extension is because we're going to be dealing a lot in this course with loads representing the strain values that we get and doing some calculations. Now on a stress strain diagram or a load deformation diagram we're typically going to see a yield point and they're both going to have the same relationship from the yield point coming down here a linear portion. Now what is the yield point or the yield load? That is the point where we're going to go from an elastic to a plastic deformation. So when we design parts like this and we put a load on it and we take the load off, we'd like to see it return back to its original length. That is the elastic range. That's like a rubber band. You can pull on it and it comes back to its original shape after you let the load off. If we pass a yield point, that part will permanently deform. So we want to design our parts in this linear portion and that's what we're going to be dealing with in this lab. So we've got the yield point, we know what that is, and we want to address modulus elasticity again. Modulus elasticity is the slope of this portion of the curve, and that is typically a linear looking line. And we represent that as the Hooke's Law Young's modulus. So it's Hooknodian material, that means the change in the rise over the run is going to give us the slope of this curve. That's going to give us a sense of how stiff that material is. So we would expect still having a modulus elasticity of maybe 30 mega psi. It would be a pretty steep line. Aluminum being around 10 to 11 mega psi, not near as steep of a line. Now, the other thing that we can associate with a tensile sample is when we put a load on it and we stretch it, it's also going to, once we get to the yield point, it's not going to start necking at that point, but it is going to be reducing in diameter. We call that Poisson's ratio, comparing the two strains that we're going to have from elongation and diameter change is Poisson's ratio. In this slide, we're going to be talking about the change in length and the change in resistance. We call this a piezo-resistive effect. So as something elongates, we're going to put strain on it. We know that the increased load is going to change that length, which is going to change the diameter. It's also going to change the resistance of that strain gauge that we're going to mount onto this part. And so we can associate the change in length over original length as being strain, but also the change in resistance over the original resistance in relationship here to what we call a gauge factor. Now in some of the labs we'll be talking about gauge factors and we find the gauge factor for a given strain gauge that we would mount on here from the package. Now we'll have a lab that after we install we'll be comparing the gauge factor and seeing how good of a job we did that. I believe that's in module A. To understand what's happening here is basically it's electronics and we have a simple circuit, and a simple circuit is going to have voltage, current, and resistance. So let's go up here and look at this. Current is shown by the letter I, and that's typically in amps. Now, on these strain gauges, we're going to be down in the microamps. Very, very, very small changes in current. Very, very small changes in resistance, which is going to be measured in ohms. Very small changes because we're measuring down in the micro range as well as the voltage, which is done by volts. Now, how do I understand the relationship of these three? I like this little illustration here. We're going to apply a voltage across something, and we're going to be trying to push that current through that wire, or that resistor, or that strain gauge. And depending on the resistance that we have, is going to allow only so much current to go through there. So if we increase the resistance, 
making it harder to get through, we're going to have less current going through here. This is known as Ohm's law, where we have current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So this is kind of a circuit. If we try to have current going through the circuit, if we have the resistance go up, we're going to see less current going through there. That takes us to this slide where we have a strain gauge here. And a strain gauge is designed, this one is designed to be pulled in lengthwise here. You can see we have forces here represented by the blue arrows. Now we can stretch it or we can compress it. So we install these strain gauges in the initial state where we don't have a load on there. We're going to glue it to an object. We'll have a video that talks about how to do that correctly and attach wires to it. That's going to have some resistance. So this is going to have some resistance value, just like a resistor. As we stretch this, now we're going to stretch it by these alignment marks right here. You see these two little ticks right here? That's these two tick marks. So on one video, it's going to talk about having a burnished line, setting this in there correctly according to the alignment marks on the grid. That's what we're going to do. And that's going to tell us we're trying to measure the strain across these two alignment marks right here. So as we pull that strain gauge, we're going to see it elongate. These are going to become narrower in size because of Poisson's ratio. If it's getting longer, it's also getting smaller in diameter. The resistance is going up. More resistance, less current going through. Now, likewise, if I come in here and compress this thing, this thing is going to get shorter and the diameters of these are going to get bigger. That means the resistance is going to be easier to get more current through there, so my resistance is going down. You need to know this relationship over here. Now, one thing I want to do is take a quick stab at quality install here with our strain gauge. I want to spend a second on this. I like looking at this picture because, as you can tell, the two pads that we have here don't have the solder going all the way up into the gauge area, which is going to change our resistance and how this strain gauge is going to work. So in the video of installation, you're going to see us talk about how to ensure we don't get the heat too far up there by soldering too far. We also limit the length of the wires that is stripped off the wire to a sixteenth of an inch right here from the insulation. We also want to see the insulation not being able to make contact with the base metal underneath. So this is a pretty clean install. We don't have a solder or any connection of current from one pad to the next. Now some of you are going to say this has two pads. Is there a, a polarity issue with the white and the black and the red wires? Well we have no polarity issues with the strain gauge. It doesn't matter if I had soldered the red wire here or here or put these two wires down here. There's no polarity, positive, negative issues like a battery being installed wrong into your remote control. Now, some of you are going to wonder why we have two wires. We'll talk about that later in some of the lab sessions, but basically that's going to go into the type of configurations in the Wheatstone bridges that we're going to do. And we're dealing with such minute changes in current and voltage that we need to ensure that we're not having changes in the connections by how we're flowing the current through there. So we're going to add an extra wire through there. We'll kind of talk about that later in some sessions. The other thing we need to talk about is the length of wires. The length from this end to the length that's going to the in instrumentation equipment needs to be the same because we don't want any change in length causing any change in current flow or resistance to the circuits that we're going to hook up. Now, data acquisition refers to how are we going to collect data from this strain gauge. So there are going to be two major bridge configurations that we're going to hook up these strain gauges. Now the first one we're going to talk about here is called a Wheatstone quarter bridge. The next one is going to be a Wheatstone full bridge. You're going to see that in a lot of the labs and talking about them. Now a Wheatstone quarter bridge is shown right here where we're going to have one strain gauge installed in this circuit here. Now this is a Wheatstone circuit and we're going to be able to measure the voltage from this point to this point and compare it to the voltage originally applied. This is going to give us a very sensitive and accurate way of measuring the change in voltage and currents by this Wheatstone bridge. Now, the difference in a full bridge and a quarter bridge is a full bridge is going to have a strain gauge at every one of these resistor points. Okay. A quarter bridge is just going to have one. So you could read through here that the differences are that the 
full bridge is going to be more accurate and more sensitive versus a single strain gauge install using a quarter bridge. But the single quarter bridge is going to be cheaper, less soldering, less space, things like that. So there's advantages and disadvantages to each. We'll be using both in our, our course. Now then, looking at this side, where are we going here? This is kind of talking about the derivation where we want to get down here in terms of the strain is measured by the change in voltage over the original voltage times that gauge factor that we talked about. We kind of hinted on that in the previous slide, and we're going to see these illustrations within our lab sheets, and it will show you guys more depth later on how some of this is derived. But we're interested in measuring that change in voltage right here very accurately. In all these labs, you're going to have a strain gauge. We're going to be measuring the amount of change in length due to a force, which is going to relate to a change in resistance. We're going to be able to associate those to the strain value of the part, how much load we're putting on, how much strain we're putting on. And so the more load, the higher the strain values are going to be. The lower the load, the lower the strain values. So we can reference that to how much current we're going to put through here as we go through these measurements. And you're going to see us measuring that in micro strains in terms of the labs. I hope this helps you out, and we'll see you on the other videos.